Despite recording around 90,000 COVID cases daily for the past week, India has decided to reopen its schools, but only for senior students and on a voluntary basis. Schools can reopen next week starting Monday. The government has said COVID precautions need to be in place for schools to open. But many parents aren't convinced the measures will be sufficient to keep their children safe. Aditi has spent the past six months almost entirely at home. Her routine, she says, has been quite dull. When she is not studying or completing her assignments, she is watching films and spending time with her twin sister. A senior at school, Aditi has been taking all her classes online, which has become the norm since schools across the country have been shut for the past six months due to COVID. But for Aditi, Studying online has not been as efficient as going to school. In school, we've, we've been concentrating very much, but at home, we can't concentrate that much because sometimes there are, there are connections which are lost. We can't be able to hear the teachers and uh, we can't really uh, write any notes that she's giving because, again, the connection problem is the main problem. After a long gap, the Indian government is now going to permit schools to partially reopen from September 21st but only for senior students who need guidance from teachers and on a completely voluntary basis. Many schools are still in the process of finalizing their reopening strategies and the safety measures that they will be taking, which include not allowing students to use public transport, cutting down on the school time, reduce classroom strengths and multiple entry and exit points, among other regular measures. Some schools have started giving orientation classes to the students on the rules they need to follow if they return to the classroom. But at a time when the COVID cases in the country are skyrocketing, this move is proving to be a challenge for schools. There may be some students who do not follow this thing and we cannot keep our eyes on them all of the time. So that is a challenge. Then another is there is additional expense on school. Now with this fumigation, sanitization, providing these things, even upgradation of the school uh, uh, infrastructure. Guidelines given by the government have done little to reassure parents and students about their safety. First of all, there will be no guarantee or schools will not uh, give us a 100% assurance that uh, our children will be safe there. I have discussed with the, the fellow parents, I think 80% of them in my circle, uh, they are not in favour of sending their kids. Despite the partial reopening of schools next week, School administrations and the government are still encouraging students to stick to online classes for their safety. Aditi school will not open its doors for a couple of weeks. But even when it does, she will not be going. While she says she misses attending classes and being with her friends, Aditi knows it is not yet safe enough to return to school. And Manira Chaudhary, who filed that report, joins me now from uh, Delhi. Manira, I'd like to expand a bit on a few points that uh, your report raises. First, what are the safety measures schools are required to have in place before they open? Well, one thing to remember is that the government at the moment has just permitted the schools that if they wish to, they can open uh, their schools for senior students. So a lot of schools in different states are still in the process of deciding what date they should actually start functioning. So in their guidelines, the Ministry of Home Affairs has given some rules and regulations that should be followed. For example, there should be a six feet distance which should be maintained in all areas at all times. Events like sporting events or assemblies are strictly prohibited because that creates uh, a situation of crowding. Uh, also, sanitization uh, of school premises is necessary. But schools themselves are taking their own measures for example, not allowing students to use uh, public transport when they're coming to school or not allowing them to share their food with e each other. So there are different range of measures which, uh, which the schools are taking. One head of the school that I spoke to also said that they may actually enroll in some volunteers to ensure that when the students come to school, there is a proper distance which is maintained between them at all times. I suppose the question is also why the government is allowing schools to reopen when clearly a majority of parents don't feel like sending their children to school and COVID cases are rising in India. Well, it's a tricky situation. At the moment, 
there is no reason which has been given by the government. There's no reason out there that why schools are being allowed to open. But some heads of the schools that I spoke to in private while researching for the story are of the opinion that the government knows that online education is not a successful concept in India. Since the beginning, it's been six months since the lockdown. The first lockdown took place and we know there is a huge digital divide in India. Forget about rural uh, households, but even within urban areas, there is a digital divide. So in turn, and there are, even though parents are concerned that they can't, they should not be sending their children to school, they're also concerned about the huge loss of education that they are suffering. So in a way, the government has, in an attempt to, according to these heads of the school that I spoke to, in an attempt to share the onus along uh, with the schools and not only themselves, have given them given an option that, you know, there is a voluntary basis. If the students want to come and clear their doubts, they can. We'll leave it there for the time being. But thank you so much for joining us. Manyana Chaudhary in Delhi. Over in Pakistan, students have already begun to return to schools. Senior schools are the first to open their doors as part of a staggered reopening of educational institutions across the country. The government has asked all establishments to ensure masks are worn and sanitizers are used. Schools were closed in March when a nationwide lockdown was enforced as part of a COVID-19 containment strategy. For more, I'm joined by Parvez Hudbhai. He's a nuclear physicist and educationist, and he joins me now from Islamabad. Professor Hudbhai, good to have you on the program. Now, this staggered reopening plan for schools from the government, do you think it is safe and uh, well-planned? Well, everybody in Pakistan now is uh, taking it easy. The markets are open. People are going to work. It's life as normal, except for the schools and colleges. And so it's, yes, I think it is uh, time that uh, students go back to school. So students have been away from school since March. How has this uh, impacted their studies? Have they at all been able to study in this entire period? Well, it's the poor students who have had absolutely no chance and they've lost all these six months because there's no question of them having internet where they live in the villages and in the various distance, distant parts of the country, as well as those who live in the poorer areas of the cities. So, yes, I'd say that 80% uh, of students have pretty much lost all these months. In terms of uh, colleges and universities, some of them have distance learning, but uh, relatively few. And so these six months have been I'd say, by and large, lost. It's quite a, a significant number, you say, 80% of school students having lost six months. What does that mean for their future? Uh, that, uh, of course, um, <laughs> the education quality isn't here, it isn't very good over here, so I don't know what that means precisely, but I do know that those who go to the better schools and who are in competition for getting into universities, they have lost, and um, that, this is irrecoverable time. Now, uh, in Pakistan, something like 25 million students don't go to school at all. They don't have school. So, of course, whether there was COVID or no COVID, they wouldn't have had an education. What would you say about the response of the government in trying to cater to these students who, firstly, A, don't have access to school education, and these 80% of school students who have lost six months? Is there any help or any, some, any sort of a plan forthcoming from the government? None that I've heard of. I don't think the government has the capacity to make up all this time. Uh, what they've simply done is that they've deferred the examinations they will be held at some um, uh, later time. But in terms of the quantity of learning, I don't think that there is any plan to make up for that. What does this say about the state of education uh, in the country? And I wonder if this is also an opportunity. Sorry? What does this say about the state of education in Pakistan? And I also wonder in the same breath if this is potentially an opportunity to have another look at that and maybe uh, fulfill certain shortcomings. I'd say the opportunity exists only at the university level where uh, now some universities have started distance learning. And uh, this, in principle, opens the possibility of a better quality of education because once you get on the internet, then there's a lot of stuff out there. Of course, most of it is in English and so will not be understandable. Nevertheless, 
I'd say that uh, distance learning does provide an opportunity. As far as the rest of the country, as far as school education goes, um, it only the rich schools have been able to take advantage of this. And so, yes, I do know that the private schools are making um, the same amount of money as they did earlier, and right. uh, they are having an effective distance learning program. But the poor schools, there's uh, no chance of that. We'll leave it there for the time being. But thank you so much for joining us. Parvez Hudbai from Islamabad. Students are also being allowed back to schools in Hong Kong, though only partially. They can attend half-day classes, orientation or preparatory classes, depending on their year of study. But one pupil in a primary school has already tested positive for COVID. So all have to take part in extra precautions, making life in class even more of a slog. They told us we need to be careful. Someone at school got sick. So we have to stay extra clean this year. Extra, extra clean. At least all the hand stuff keeps the germs away. We have to keep away from each other too. Keep our hands to ourselves. Man, this is boring. And yeah, keep that mask up all the time. I'm just a little bit hot. And these plastic dividers, like a fishbowl. But it's for our protection. And if those older kids can take it, so can I.